so freaking cold. <laughs> Are you guys cold? I remember my first winter with chickens. I was so worried because I was a new chicken keeper at that point. So I asked my mentors that I had at that time and they both said to me, there is never a reason to put heat in your chicken coop. Well, that was over a decade ago. I have learned a lot and I've learned that there's actually some exceptions to the rule. So let's talk about what's right for your specific situation. Hey guys, welcome to Chickenlandia. I am a backyard chicken educator here in the Pacific Northwest, but you can call me the president of Chickenlandia. I'm gonna show you guys these new chickens that I got. What are these things? <laughs> I just got these little chickens. They are rescues. They are really small frizzles. They are very poorly bred. <laughs> I, I don't know what planet they're from. I need somebody to tell me, are they tribbles? And will they multiply? <laughs> So most of you that are watching this video have layer breeds and these kinds of production breeds that usually come from hatcheries, they've been bred to lay lots of eggs and they've also been bred to be pretty tolerant of a variation of climates. And in general, most chickens do better in the cold than they do in the heat. Now that's not true for every single breed, but in general, if they're allowed to acclimate to the dropping temperatures, then they will do just fine through the winter. So the key for a lot of you that are watching this video today will be to just make sure that you keep the moisture level down in your coop. Now I know those of you that have been watching me for a long time have heard me talk about this a lot, but actually chickens will tolerate cold a lot better than they will tolerate condensation in the air. And they create condensation just from breathing at night and from their dropping. So you gotta be really mindful of it and make sure that you have good ventilation, but that there's not like cold drafts going on your chickens while they're trying to sleep at night. So the way you can achieve that is you put the ventilation up high above where they roost. And most of the plans that you can find online to build chicken coops or most of the prefabricated coops, that's how they're designed. The, the ventilation is up high so that the chickens can roost and stay warm, but the coop stays well ventilated and moisture does not build up which is the key because moisture is actually what will cause problems with frostbite and respiratory issues so i do want to tell you guys about something that really bummed me out and i i wasn't going to say it in this video but i'm just going to tell you because i want you to know that <sighs> These kind of struggles, they happen to the best of us. Most of you know this year I moved to a new location. I'm now out in the country. Um, I was living basically in the suburbs before, and now I have a nice, beautiful piece of land. But even though I'm only basically 20 minutes at most from my old property, the climate here is completely different. So I've really been having trouble um, controlling the moisture in my coop. And so I ended up getting some panel heaters. And even with those, I had one chicken that got frostbite. And I'm super bummed about it. She's a new chicken of mine. She's a leghorn. She had a super floppy comb. And I was putting um, ointment on it to try and prevent it, you know, to create like a moisture barrier. But the moisture level in my coop just went up too high because we had a blizzard here and it was crazy. I have never been, I mean, I'm from Texas. Okay, I have never been in anything like that. And I had the windows cracked and snow was getting into the cube. So I had to close the windows and the ventilation that I have is not enough with the without the windows cracked. So the moisture just built up too much and she got frostbite. Her, her name is Scully. And um, I just noticed it today, so I'm gonna try and do everything I can for her. But I just want you to know it happens to the best of us. She's perfectly happy. She's still healthy. She's gonna be fine. But, you know, it makes me feel bad. Oh, 
So basically the main reason why most backyard chicken educators and most bloggers will tell you that there's never a reason to supplement heat in your coop is because they have a big concern about fire hazard. And this is a very legitimate concern. When you add a heat lamp into your coop, you are really adding a fire hazard into your coop. Because just imagine how hot a heat lamp gets. It gets really hot. You can't touch the bulb, you'll burn yourself. So every year, there are coop fires they are devastating and you know you could lose your whole flock but worse than that i mean people have lost their homes or worse what i feel more comfortably recommending to people is that they use a radiant heater that is made specifically for chicken coops now there is a drawback to these the chickens actually have to be pretty close to them in order for them to work in order for them to benefit from them because they really just don't get that hot it's like a panel heater and the chickens go close to it and that's how they stay warm so you know with my chicken coop it's not really gonna heat the coop up that much. It'll, it'll keep it a, little, a few degrees higher, but not anything significant like what a heat lamp would do. Okay, so let's talk about some of the reasons why you might want to supplement heat in your coop. And these are rare, but some people have these situations, and if that's your case, you might wanna consider supplementing heat. If you live in a climate where there are very extreme temperatures for extended periods of time, like let's say it's 40 degrees or negative 40, then you might wanna consider supplementing heat. Now that's not to say that there aren't chickens that are living in these conditions without heaters, because there are. If you have exotic breeds, you know, some breed from Indonesia that's super fancy, but definitely not cold hardy. Or you have frizzles, especially if they're poorly bred frizzles like mine, they just have like sparse feathering. They don't look that great. And if you have sometimes silkies don't do as well and sometimes ceramas don't do as well. But you know, if you have the kinds of breeds that you're just worried about them in the winter and you think that they might not be very resilient through super low temperatures, then you might want to consider supplementing heat. And like, you know, you saw my chickens, some of them are pretty funny looking. And <laughs> I mean, I, I guess you could call them exotic. Um, but yeah, I, I either have to bring them inside or supplement some heat in extreme temperatures. Now I do have a video about how to acclimate baby chicks once they're fully feathered to the outside temperatures even when it's colder outside and I will link that in the description for you. But just know that you can't, you know, even though they're fully feathered, um, if it's below 50 degrees outside, you can't just throw them outside because they have to acclimate to that. And you can end up with a really bad situation if you just throw your baby chicks outside without giving them a chance to acclimate to the dropping temperatures. If you have already been dealing with frostbite issues in your flock, if you have been battling respiratory issues in your flock and you have tried to incre increase the ventilation, you've done everything you can to resolve these issues and you continue to have problems, don't worry about it. Just add supplemental heat to your coop. And it's probably a situation where, you know, a panel heater or two will really help a lot. If you're having trouble affording a panel heater, look on the online classifieds. A lot of times people are giving them away for free or they're selling them for cheap, they're used, because every year people stop keeping chickens or they're just getting rid of their old equipment. So a lot of times you can find a really good deal. Um, and So I just wanna make sure that you have that option and you do a little research, maybe you can find something that is more accessible to you. One of the most annoying things about winter is having your chicken's waterers freeze. It is absolutely awful and super annoying. <laughs> but guess what? I have a video about keeping your chicken's water from freezing, even if you don't have electricity. And you can watch it by clicking right here. It's 100% friendly backyard chickens, education and entertainment. And I know you're gonna love it.